she is back. Look at the, oh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to deal with this diva first. Well, hey guys, welcome back. So this is a plant tour video and the first plant I'm gonna deal with is that Anthurium regal. You can see that I removed all the plants on this table to get her. And because of that, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how much shade it was casting upon this room. The regal lives up here and you can see that she's up against the window. That's fine, but if I let go, Oh my god, this is gonna be so bad. If I let go, it is leaning forward. So I can't completely let go or it might snap. So I'm basically gonna put a collar and can we, oh my god. I am shocked that this leaf is still here uh, because like I said, she is working on another one. And usually when that happens, the old leaf just starts to crisp, but like, oh my gosh. I love how a month ago I said bye to it and now she's still here a month later. Okay. Lean her against this table here. And I'm just gonna bring y'all to the floor and we'll just get started. Also, it's gonna be May. <laughs> Happy May, everyone. <laughs> oh, this is such a bad time, but also a very good time. Look at the sun. So here's my plan. Okay, when she was shorter, I would just use sphagnum moss. And you can see that when there was a new adventitious root, it would just grow into the moss and then the pond. Recently, I mentioned that there are a bunch of new adventitious roots that are coming out of nowhere. And I think it's because the plant either feels it needs more support, so it's trying to find a way to get that support. And so I'm going to remove this moss, first of all, and then I'm gonna add a collar. A few situations. Um, I don't have an actual collar, but I'm gonna use this clear planter, cut the bottom, and then I'm just gonna put it like that over the stem here. Then I'm short on pawn. I don't have a lot of pawn left. Then I realized this regal is in half leka and half pawn. And I keep forgetting because I think only the furcatum and the regal are in that mix. So I was like, okay, I have a ton of leka. Let's do that. Also, y'all can't see but the Hoya Bloom that I've been obsessed with opened last night. Uh, we'll talk about her later. So I know what y'all are thinking. Why don't I just use moss? I'm not particularly a fan of moss on my Ethereum, to be quite honest. That's why I removed all of it that was on my uh, queen. Also, I'm trying to prioritize and I'm using that for moss poles. Now that I'm realizing that moss poles at their like widest setting is like kind of what I prefer, I need a lot of moss, so just carefully removing. Thankfully the moss is moist, so it's a lot easier to remove. And I'm excited. Yeah, we've really like been through a lot together. <laughs> I've said before that this gigantic leaf is partly luck just because really, I haven't really done anything. Um, I've kind of gone against what people have been saying about the regal. Like for example, that leaf came out during the winter and y'all know that my humidity is like 30. At its lowest, it's like 30%. And then in the winter, the highest is probably like 50, maybe 55. On top of that, this plant specifically, since I transferred her into this pot, I have never flushed the medium. Now, moving forward, I am going to be flushing the medium just because the salt can sometimes affect like the foliage, specifically with velvet leaf anthuriums. And through time, there is an accumulation in the medium. But I mean, it's just fascinating to see that because I don't know, it's probably been like, has it been almost? It's been like a year and a half that I've had this. Oh, like a drop in already. And yeah, obviously the temperatures during the winter were a lot cooler. So I'm just gonna have to see what happens in the warmer months moving forward. And I guess moving forward, I will be flushing this plant just because when I apply this collar, like I wanna try my best to keep the top part of the stem where the collar is really wet. So, so just like the Queen Anthuria, I'm probably just gonna run water over the medium, just so the top part is kept moist. Oh my God, another update that I just saw as I was preparing this video. I don't know why I'm like upset. <laughs> my Monstera Constellation, the big, big, big one, is pushing out a new leaf. And 
I am not prepared. Like, I do not know where I'm gonna put that leaf. She's she's slamming against the window. The petiole was kind of slamming against the window. So I'm like kind of worried that there might be some damage. And I know, scream at me all you want. I was supposed to propagate her. The, like, I don't, I just don't know. Where am I gonna put all the cuttings where they can get enough light to root? Incredible. Okay, I'm gonna show you. So I took all the moss off. This looks fat. Oh my gosh, it looks so cool. Look at the roots all around here. Like, it looks like a legit, like, you know when trees grow and the roots grow out, like, into the surface and they mature? It kind of looks like that. I know, y'all, there's a lot of nodes, there's a lot of roots, so I could potentially propagate it, but because I love this plant so much, I love how big the leaves are. Obviously, I think this is, like, a fluke that this big leaf has come here and blessed me with her presence. Okay, taking the pot, I'm gonna cut through it. I hope these scissors are <laughs> sharp enough. Okay, I may want to go through the bottom first. Oh, oh! Now that we got the bottom, I'm just going to cut through because obviously I need to wrap it around. So here we are. This is a good idea. I don't know. I think it's a good idea. Okay, how do we feel? Oh, wow. Okay, I like this. Okay, question mark. Oh, should I also put a moss pole? I think I might want to. Large moss pole. You know, if I'm gonna put a moss pole, it needs to be now. Okay, if I try my hardest. Okay, okay, I think I like that. Okay, I can't show y'all because the leaf is up there. I know she looks wonk. Now I'm just grabbing some tape. Trying my best to just overlap pot. Okay, still don't know how I feel about this, but we've committed. So, collar here, moss pull against the stem. And then you can see that we're gonna fill this and really just hope for the best. I'm literally just gonna be adding a little bit of like Lekka, a little bit of Pawn. <laughs> Okay, so I filled the moss pole all the way to the top. You can see it's a mix of pond and leka. Same with the medium. Okay, I think I'm happy with this. Now, it feels like the moss pole is secure with the pond and leka in it. So I feel more comfortable. <laughs> Maybe not. I did want to tie. <laughs> I want to tie it. Ooh, I want to tie it around just so it has some stability. Uh, I was trying to figure out a strategy that was more effective because y'all know that I always struggle to put this plant in my sink. And so I was thinking I'll just grab a Lekka net pot um, and then a five gallon bucket, take the stopper out of the bottom, just like that, put it in. So now just like the queen, um, I can just water through and then ultimately just flush the plant. How do we feel? I think I like this idea. Do you hear that? So it's just going through the bottom. So I'll let this run through and then I'll just put the stopper back and like do it again in maybe a week. Wow, big project for the regal. I know it's still a hassle y'all, but I don't, I can't put it in a bigger pot. Like there's no room. Just putting the stopper back. Okay, I took a small break to eat. Y'all, I'm full. Don't mind my belly, but I can't like hold it in. So it's just gonna have to be out like this. Okay, so uh, before I ate, I filmed a reel for Instagram about the Hoya CV Kaimuki. I have wanted this Hoya to bloom for so long. And I got this Hoya, I think two and a half years ago. I actually have the unboxing. I think it came in a bag, so it's not quite an unboxing, but I'll just include that clip here. <gasps> Whoa, this is insane. Okay, 
So I almost dropped it. Hoya CV Kaimuki, is that right? Kaimuki. Oh, I dropped it. <laughs> this plant has similar blooms to, I guess it's parents, where they're very large and cup-like pink blooms. And yeah, I'm excited to see that. If I see that, obviously it's, she's a little baby right now, but wow, I'm just so impressed. Oh my gosh. Look, this is incredible. Only one bud survived. She had more. One day they all like fell off. I don't know why, but look at this. Yeah, so stunning. I can't get over. Like the pink speckling is like bleeding into just, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Someone asked me again, me and describing Hoya scents, it's just like not reliable. So like, don't listen to me. But when I smelled it, oh, see now it's changed. I, okay. So last night around 10 PM is when it first opened. It was like a gummy sweet, I don't know. You know those gummy treats? I don't even know, the candy. Um. So it smelled like sweet. It wasn't strong at all, but also it had like a chemically smell. I don't know, but it wasn't like that bad. It's so, so I can't smell anything. There's literally no, I like injured it <laughs> with my nose. Okay, so there's some sap there. Oh, I feel bad. Whoopsie, whoops, whoops, whoops. Okay, this is the Hoya Kaimuki. Large, dark, thick Hoya leaves. And oh my gosh. Future Kevin, if you could find a clip from a Q&A in November, I'm pretty sure I was going to get rid of this. Is there a plant you regret buying? Yes, I thought about this recently because I was like looking around. I'm kind of on the edge if I want to keep it. My Hoya CV Kaimuki, huge robust bust hoya leaves and i mean she's growing fantastic the frustrating thing with these plants is i feel like they need hot and humid conditions i just feel like i don't have the right conditions so that's why i kind of regret buying the kaimuki good thing i didn't okay so and the roots are over here <laughs> I said in a video, I don't know if it was a Patreon video, but I said that honestly, if this Hoya blooms for me, it's gonna make my year. It's gonna make my 2023. This is one of the moments where like, it's it's highlighted in my brain as like being a really, really big thing. Uh, okay, I really want to look at all these gigantic Hoyas here. Uh, we'll start out with this one that's so close here. The main reason why I need to look at them is they are going off tendrils everywhere. They're gonna start grabbing each other. And then when they do, and I pull one of them, pulls the other one, there's chaos everywhere. Like, look, look at all these <laughs> tendrils. So two grow lights. Ever since I put these big Hoyas under these two grow lights, I mean, one of them bloomed for me. Anyhow, so we'll go one by one. So Hoya Villatinoides, cross with UT001. Roots look good. Um, she's not dry, but the reservoir does need to be filled. And so I'm just grabbing these clips and I'm just gonna clip the tendrils to each other. Just adding some water to the reservoir. Hoya Glabra Schlechter. So once I put her under the grow light, she's pushing out a lot of new leaves, specifically close to the grow light. And then, you know, they, they got damaged. So I'm gonna just get rid of that one leaf here, I think, yeah. Okay, she is fine. Oh, the Clemenciorum, y'all. This Hoya was just between all these gigantic ones. So I was confused, you know, how she was putting out these big leaves. I got a few questions about my gray ghost and where she's at. This is where she's at, so. She's growing. She did recently push out this really silver leaf, which I'm obsessed with. Oh, cause it was pushing out, you know, more of a, what's a term you would use? Dusty silver, I don't know. And yeah, she's just making her way down the tendril. She's gonna loop around again. So yeah, I'm gonna try my very best not to chop it. The Nova ghost, on the other hand, I might chop her. God, Hoya cutest porcelana. Oh, beast. Absolute beast. Okay, so again, I'm gonna work on just tying the tendrils down because you can see there's a lot. I could cut them. Like she's already like super full. Like, do I need her to grow anymore? Probably not. <laughs> I guess that'll do for now. Look at these um 
but this this plant especially in the summer it's it's non-stop blooming so obsessed with the sun stressing again she sits against my south-facing window and there is a grow light right over here i can never remember the name of this way <laughs> I'm just seeing something now, the Hanye Pink, but we'll get to her in a bit. See, it's happening. They're all pulling each other. They're all fighting. Stop fighting. Sometimes they're like raveled too much and like you can't save them, unfortunately. Oya species NS0521. So such a fast grower. I mean, you can see that the tendrils are literally everywhere. And so, Okay, there's some buds. See, this is the thing when you have a full plant. You're like, you just can't see a lot of the time. Oh. Okay, future Kevin, zoom in. Look at those. Ooh. Future Kevin put in the picture. These flowers are, uh, I'm just so obsessed. So I'm just tying, <laughs> there's like a sea of Hoyas everywhere. <laughs> Uh, I'm just tying some down. I'm also gonna look for more places where there's um, potential peduncles. Cause I think when she bloomed, she only had the one and I'm pretty sure that's a new one. Um, I usually find uh, a lot of dead leaves right under here just because they're not getting any light. And obviously if they're under here, they are much older, so it's totally fine. So I like to just pull them out. Like there's some that are just falling. Okay, I think that's the best I can do. Um, I'm afraid to, because I don't want to miss the blooms. They are sp still pretty young since the blooms are pretty big and you saw that the buds look so small. Um, so I'll put her back and we'll just keep an eye on her. I'm going to fill up the reservoir. Hopefully that doesn't shock it. Y'all find that that happens too. Like I see some buds and then I water it or I give it nutrient solution, whether it's in pond or LECA. I don't know if it overwhelms the plant, but then the buds just drop. I don't know if it's a coincidence, but that happens to me a lot. So I'm scared, but she's dry, so I have to water. Okay, the metallicum leaf really wants to fight today. This one is so big and heavy. There's like a bundle of buds and I didn't see it until now. Okay, let me try my very best to show these. Right over here. Do you see that? That's crazy. And it's a big bundle. Are you kidding? This is so beautiful. Obviously, there's a chance that not all of these will make it, but it looks so good. Okay. Yeah. An actual beast. Okay, same thing. <laughs> a little cleanup because there's some leaves that are totally crisped because they're touching the grow light. I rotated all the Hoyas just so I can see the buds. So Henny Pink, we're there, moving on to the NS. They're facing that way. Cutest Porcelana, right over there. Okay, and we're just gonna put them all back here. Some people might think that they're way too cramped, but having those two grow lights on the south facing window, it allows enough light. Obviously they're happy because like a lot of them are like almost blooming. Also plants, when you put them together, feed off each other's like microclimates and humidity. Okay, we've moved to the living room because, oh, my camera's doing that thing again where I'm like white. Okay. I think we're good. Uh, weather update, it started raining, raining in Toronto, but that's okay. Uh, philodendron model Fitzcarraldo. So I haven't wet the moss pool in so long. It is dry. I do see a root. I don't know why it just doesn't go into the moss pool. It goes like outside the moss pool. Anyhow, I'm just gonna water it under um, running water. Okay, and I'm just gonna add moss because she's growing. Yeah, whatever's in this pot, this is the last of my moss. I need more. Who's excited? I'm really excited. This is so beautiful and um, it doesn't say orange. It's not orange. It's like yellow and gold. Oh, love it. I don't know. I love this yellow when it first comes out. Okay, okay. Jose is back. <laughs> Although she doesn't need to be watered, I do need to wet the moss pool.
Okay, I got the queen. So I have my queen here. I'm just gonna water the moss pole. Uh, she hasn't really budged just because it's only been a week since I um, watered her. While the queen is draining, I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm weirdly tired. Syngonium, Wanlandia. Oh, okay. Wow, she's like really not rooting in the moss pool. I'm happy that the stripe is still here. I am thrilled that it's still here a little bit in the newer leaves. And so, do I have to tie it down again? I guess I do. Mm. <sighs> Oof. I'm just taking some press and seal and I am. Wow, I really thought that they were gonna root in the moss. Hey, cute. Now I'm just going to, uh, I guess I could take the queen back. I think she's done draining. Just putting plant tape in case because sometimes when the press and seal's wet, it doesn't stick. So I'm just putting this in the sink and I'll just wet the moss pole. Okay, so exciting. Anthurium crystallina magnificum. Y'all have seen her recently. She is dry. I'm gonna have to, yep. Yeah. Oh, look at the roots now. <sighs> yeah, I had the option of repotting. I chose not to, and I think it'll be okay. So I'm just adding some water to the reservoir and just making sure I cover the adventitious roots at the top. She's doing just fine. I'm so excited. Okay, y'all, are y'all ready for this one? <sighs> Magnificum luxuriance. Outstandingly beautiful. Oh my gosh. Stunning, 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 stunning. There is a new leaf. Whew. How are you? How are you? Actually, this one's not dry. I'll just add a little more. And again, I'm making sure I'm um, covering roots up here with pawn. See, this root, because it was covered, it's now starting to root. And so I'm happy to see that. And I said this before, this is gonna be one of my favorites, like of all time. Okay, so here they, oh my gosh, here they are. Okay, and then the last one, the Crystallina Magnificum crossed with Luxuriance. So look at this cutie. Um, remember, this is the one that had the leaf that I was like, I think this is a one-off, and I was right, so beautiful. She is actually the most dry, and I feel really bad. Ah, she, okay, she's not completely dry, so that I feel a little bit better about that. They're so pretty. Love them, love them, love them. Okay. Um, <laughs> it looks so funny. Uh, this is my variegated Edinsoniae. The two oldest leaves are going. Um, I remembered, I don't think I put nutrient solution in here. So she might've just been sitting in water for like the past few weeks. Moss pool is dry. Let's water her. Let's take a look. Ooh. See, I saw the other one and I was like, oh, I need to like adjust it. So do you see that this one was rooting? There's another one up here. Do you see that? So look at those two, amazing. Okay, whoops. And actually there's a third one. Oh, wow, look, that's the third one right there. While that's doing its thing, uh, this is my Snow Queen, the one that doesn't have any splash. So maybe I'll just like sneak in to just fill the reservoir. I'm trying to multitask y'all because I'm a little behind. <laughs> Hoya serpents. She is still here, um, but she hasn't grown. She started to grow a little bit. Like some of this is new, but like barely anything. Um, again, I, you know how I always say, blast your Hoya with light um, in order to get like fast growth. So again, I want to experiment um, with giving a lot of my Hoyas less light. This is under grow light. However, it's probably only getting 500 to 1000 foot candles for 14 hours and it has not done a thing. I'm gonna have to find another shelf. Okay, let's take a walk. I'm just gonna show you where she lives so y'all have an idea. She currently lives there. So the grow light is over here. And to the naked eye, it looks like it's getting a lot of light, but I just want to show you 
Yeah, 500. Okay, 500 to 600. So down here, less. This is 400 actually. 400 to like 750. Whereas before, he lived up here with all these other Hoyas. And these Hoyas are getting like 2,000 to 3,000 foot candles. And yeah, 2,300. And so I'm thinking I might move her under. I'm just, I'm just shifting things. <laughs> I'm trying to put it through. So she's right over here. Um, let's do a measure. So 2,000 to 3,000. And even the ones that are not directly under, they're getting 1,000. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, I mean, that's something that I kind of recommend all the time. Just to adjust as your plant grows or if your plant's not growing, just, just use your critical thinking and like obviously seeing that this plant wasn't growing a lot and like the foliage, I'm touching the foliage now. Like it's, the leaves are firm. It's not like it's dying. It's just like not growing fast. And that was just a change because it was one of my fastest growing Hoyas until I moved her away from the grow light. So if y'all are wondering why I keep telling y'all to blast your Hoyas with light. That is the reason. Uh, I mean, a similar thing, the um, Hoya Nova Ghost here, one of my fastest growing Hoyas until I moved it onto the shelf. And again, the Hoyas on the shelf are getting 400 to 700 foot candles and um, it hasn't grown a lot. Before I put this trellis on, she was living on that top shelf, like I said, 2,000 to 3,000 foot candles. Those Hoyas are growing really quickly. And just knowing how fast this Hoya usually grows, I'm kind of linking it to light. Okay. So sadly, and this is just how it goes, the uh, Phalaenopsis Mitu Diamond Panda, the blooms are going. So yeah, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut the spike off completely. I'm gonna let the plant focus on roots and foliage. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So let's head over to the sink again. Okay, so what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to cut just closest to the base. So I'm gonna make a cut here. So sad, oh well. So here they are. You can see she's working on a leaf over here. Okay, I'm gonna do the same with the mini mark. She does have a lot of blooms that are still okay, uh, just because it pushed out so many. So she is, like a lot of it is okay. However, you can tell in the, um, the color here, a lot of these are gonna fall soon and a lot of them are ready to go already. So again, this is my choice. You can keep them. Wait till this completely dries because there is a chance at a different node that it'll bloom and totally just Cut them if you want to focus on foliage. So I'm doing that now. Okay. You can see that the foliage looks awful. And it's because before she was in Lekka, she was in sphagnum moss and I dried her out. That's what I did with all my fowls, unfortunately. So I really want newer, healthier foliage uh, before there's more flowers. And that's the reason why I'm deciding to cut off the spike. Okay, I got distracted. I said there's two Hoyas. I only show the Hoya serpents. Michele, remember her. So she's not doing much. Really annoyed at myself because remember she had that unbelievable splash situation here. It's hard because now the plant is pushing up two tendrils. She already had this one with all the peduncles here. Um, she finally pushed out a whole bunch of leaves. I know they look awful. Um, but then there's another one here, which I wanted to favor. It's hard because I want to keep the peduncles because the flowers are one of my favorites. I keep saying that about all my plants. I really want to keep the peduncles because I really want this one to flower again. I want the foliage, like the splashy foliage to continue. And so this tendril is coming off of that node. So like my Matilde Splash and my Snow Queen, it's, a, it's the same kind of situation because it's coming out of the node over there. There's a high chance that the leaves here will have splash, but there is also a chance that they won't. Um, I'm mad at myself because when I clamped it here, this end just dried up. So thankfully, there are a couple of babies and who knows if they'll survive. <laughs> Anyhow, I feel like I'm rambling. I'm just gonna water. <laughs> so if y'all can't tell, I am watering all my plants. <laughs> I'm literally just watering all my plants because this is a couple days before I go on vacation. So obviously you need to make sure all the reservoirs is okay. So, but also I want to update you guys on like plants y'all haven't seen in a while. So this is my Hoya for Bessie. I. She's doing fine. Like, look at her. I don't know. I really want this one to bloom. And because I ignored her and she didn't do that great, um, 
in the fall, I want to say. Like, it's it's one of my goals for this year, just to make this grow. Just because I like the foliage. I don't know. I think it's pretty. Oh, okay. A couple of my strawberry shake um, mothers, even though they look not the biggest. Um, they are pushing out new growth. It's just very small. Just going to water this one and the second one here i just love how it's pushing out the smallest littlest growth um when the leaves were like this big before okay let's do these high constellations Ooh, dry 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 um this is the one that had these two leaves look how dry <laughs> um it pushed out a new growth and uh, now that's this leaf and then there is a new leaf coming over there so that's good news i put the nematodes I don't remember when I watered these, to be honest. Uh, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, I have no idea. I am known if I have a Thai constellation, or even any plant and soil, or an airy mix. I ignore it. Thai constellations for some reasons. For some, for some, for some reasons. <laughs> for some reason. They're okay. Thai constellation number two. Beautiful. Um, yeah, she's really dry. But the roots look okay. So I'm just watering both of them. So let's put these back. Okay, round two. <laughs> oh, these are so dry. They're really dry. That's one. The second one here has like the really splashy speckly leaf and the new growth. Right over here. So I'm just going to do the same thing. And because it's fungus net season, I don't have a big issue. Fingers crossed. I'm going to knock on wood. Where's the wood? There, I knocked on wood. Um, just in case, I'm going to put some yellow sticky traps. And I put this up against my strawberry shakes. So these are all in an air raid mix. I put this one next to my strawberry shakes two, year two years, <laughs> two weeks ago. And there's no fungus nets. Um, yeah, it's just like, I don't know like dirt dust so yay so i'm probably just gonna pop it into one of these planters here as y'all know fungus gnats they like wet environments i'm always scared i think that's the reason why i don't like watering my plants in an air raid mix because the moment you water them there's just fungus gnats all of a sudden not recently but anyhow i'm just popping one in here Thai constellations are next to each other so i'm just gonna put a couple and just have them right next to each other like that. Build engine strawberry shakes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to, essentially I'm gonna bottom water them so y'all can see that they're in this Ikea container. I'm just gonna water over top slowly. And then when I see a layer of water, I'm going to stop. I'm gonna just tip a little bit out, just a tiny bit. Do you see that thin layer? Um, okay, let's put it back. Okay guys, I guess that's it. I'm still not dead. <laughs> I'm sorry that I was like rushing and not really talking. I'm just so behind. It's already like, f it's 5.15. Again, y'all, I have a Patreon, so I want to thank everyone in my Lekka Drop tier and my Strawberry Shake tier. But a very special thanks to those in my Monster Burly Marks Flame tier, my Lobster Claws, Barney McCallum, Gerda, Janice Upton, Francesco, Margot T, Remy Pavila, Lynn. The Marks, Shana Nelson, Crystal, Casey Gross, Daniel Wilcox, Sam Pennypacker, Blaine B, Carlos Holling, Gina Alexandra, Corlin Walters, Storm McCroy, Rocio Ramos, Kendra Prum, Stephanie McInnes, Soda Rocks, Danny Alley, Alicia D, Courtney Evans, Simone Elizabeth, and Ryan Jones. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.